Hey guys, I'm Leo Ranke, the Guitar Maniac, and in this episode I'm gonna talk about powering the pedal board. As soon as you get more than two storm boxes, you start asking yourself how do you power those. Using the batteries might be expensive, besides you have to unplug the cables each time you don't use the storm boxes to save the battery's life, and this is not convenient. Using a patch cable seems to be a good idea. You just take one power supply and connect all the storm boxes at once. But in this case you might get in trouble with the ground loops. Let's take a closer look at how this connection actually works. As an example we take three storm boxes that are connected to a 9 volt power supply. We have two wires, one is positive and one is negative. In most of the cases negative is connected to the ground. And then we connect storm boxes with the signal cables. They have two wires as well, one is hot or signal and the other one is ground. And in the end we get a connection that is called ground loop. This connection works as an antenna for capturing the interference current. This means you might get a lot of noise. That's what's happened to me when I used the one single power supply and a patch cable. Using the multiple power supplies for each storm box doesn't seem to be convenient as well. So I decided to look for a power supply for a pedal board in German's most popular online music store. And I must say, those parts are not cheap. Some of them have still reasonable price and some are just ridiculously expensive. And the one that's made by Seox is not only expensive, it has awful pink color and it's called... A pussy power? Mm, no, no political agenda here. I decided to try out the cheapest one. The power plant made by Harley Benton, the brand of uh, Tomon Music Store. We have here a power cable, a multiple connection cables, the device itself and two users manual in German and English. Power plant has 8 connections for 9 volt DC devices and 2 for 12 volt AC and DC devices. Checking the user's manual might be a smart idea because some of the patch cables are there for reversing the polarity. And so here is the first test. And what do I hear? It's the same noise I've got when I used only one power supply and a patch cable. Let's take a closer look at this device. We have here two units, one is for the 12 volt DC and another one is for the 9 volt DC. But if you flip it over you see that all the 9 volt outputs are connected parallel to each other. The whole idea was to get rid of the ground loops and with this device this is just impossible. You may use a simple life hack if you cut the ground wire in some places. I'm just gonna solder my very own patch signal cable. I'm just gonna use the shielded wire and connect one end of it to the jack as usual and on the other end I'm gonna connect the signal wire without connecting the ground. This way the ground of all the devices will be connected through the power cable and there will be no ground loops. With this simple trick I was able to get rid of the noise. Well, I don't know if I should complain about how this power supply is built, because this was the cheapest version available at the store. I just don't see the point of using it, because uh, this requires a lot of space, it's pretty heavy, and it does exactly the same thing as these two little things and a patch cable. So, can I recommend it? It actually does kind of a good job. But maybe this is the way to go. So, that's all for today. Have a nice day and keep on rocking.